Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss the theorem that states tangent to chord theorem. Now what does that mean? If there is a tangent and there's a chord and where it meets in the opposite direction there will be an angle that's the same. Look at the following picture. What you had done was the proof but now the application. This theorem is amongst the most common and most favorite theorem. It's been asked a lot in the old papers as proofs so it is one of their favorites and it's used in a lot of application so make sure you master this theorem now what does it say it says if there's an angle that's created with the tangent and a chord now what am I talking about I'm referring to this chord right and then I'm referring to this tangent so if there's an angle between a chord and a tangent when you take that two points of the chord, the two points where it's touching the circle, and you go in the opposite direction. Now why am I saying opposite direction? If you look at the chord, on the right hand side is the angle, but I am talking of on the left hand side, opposite direction. So it, the theorem states, the angle between a tangent to a chord and a chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the opposite opposite segment. So what they're referring to is the opposite side. So I'm going right and then I'm going opposite. I'm going left. So if you look at that angle, then I'm referring to B. So what I can say is that B is equal to 60 degrees. And the reason it's equal to 60 degrees is tan chord theorem. Now let's look at the other side. If I take the angle between this tangent and this chord, right this is on my left hand side so I'm trying to move to the right and the angle on the right hand side created with this line here is going to be C so what I can say is that C is equal to 50 degrees and the reason is tan chord theorem now the following example has a center that is very important because when we have an angle at the center and we have an angle at the circumference then that means it's one of the most used rules and it is a very old rule that you've learned right in the beginning now if this angle here at O1 is equal to 150 degrees then how much is Z? so O1 is going to equal to 2 times Z angle at center is 2 times angle at circumference so I would have had that angle Z is equal to 75 degrees. Can you see the angle at center? Here's the angle at the center. And then the same points, I'm going to the circumference. So angle at center is 2 times angle at circumference. Now, let's go to the radius. I told you that radius is the heart of the section. Radius. Right, so I've got that OC is a radius and so is OE. Which means that they are equal. Now if OC is equal to OE and they radius, what type of triangle do you see here? Two sides are equal that would give me an isosceles triangle. So if I have an isosceles triangle, then I know O1 plus C1 plus E1 is going to equal to 180 degrees. That is sum of angles of a triangle. But I also know that E1 is going to equal to C1 because it's an isosceles triangle. Now, if O1 is 180 degrees, then I know that E1 and C1 is going to equal to 15 degrees. Why do I say that? If you say 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, it gives me 30 degrees. Then I'm going to split the 30 degrees between C1 and E1, which is going to give me 15 degrees. If I have that E1 is 15 degrees and I have had that Z is 75 degrees. Look at X now. Okay, so if we're working with X 
and we take the point E and the point C because it is created by the chord that's starting the tangent. Then from E, if you put your finger on E and you put your finger on C and you move together, you will see they are meeting at Z. So what can you tell me about X? X is going to equal to 75 degrees and the reason is tan chord. So we have now that X is equal to 75 degrees. It is further given to us that DC is parallel to AB. Now if DC is parallel to AB, then what do we have here? We have Z. So you can't put Z in your, in your exam paper. We have that AED is going to equal to 75 degrees. Why? It is alternate angles. And the lines that are parallel is DC is parallel to AE. Now, if this is 75 degrees, and we know from previous calculation that that's 15 degrees, and that's 15 degrees, we can tell that angle DCE, angle D. CE. So look, I'm talking of this angle. Their entire angle is going to be 75. It's a tan chord. So you can see the chord attached to the tangent. And if you continue from D to E, it links to C. So we know that D, C, E is going to equal to 75 degrees. Now let's take this out of its picture. What do we have? We have a 75 degree angle here. We have a 75 degree angle here. From that, you could tell what is this entire angle. Because it's sum of angles of a triangle. So we know that this angle here is 30 degrees. But that is not Y. That is the entire angle DEC. So we know DEC So we know angle DEC is equal to 30 degrees. Why? Sum of angles of a triangle. But what is just Y? We already have that E1 is 15 degrees. If E1 is 15 degrees, then Y is 15 degrees. Because they are next to each other and the total is 30 degrees. Now when you're doing these riders, you need to see there's a lot of all your previous rules that you need to know. You need to know your sum of angles of triangles. You need to know your parallel lines. Those are all grade 9 work. Then you need to know all your theorems of grade 11, which is like 9 theorems that you need to know. You can't just do these riders on single theorems. You must be able to know them and you must be able to know them fast and well. Okay, let's go to another rider. Now, let's look at the 40. The 40 is attached to a tangent and to a chord. If you continue the chord from its ends, you will see it makes a perfect angle at S. So what can we say? What is the value of S? S is going to equal to 40 degrees and our reason is tan chord theorem. Now, after that, what else do we have? If you look, this is a center of the circle giving us a diameter. Let's label it DE. So DE is a diameter. If that is a diameter, then what can you tell me about the angle that lies between this diameter? In other words, this triangle. What can you tell me about this entire angle? Now, DJE. How am I naming my angles? I'm looking, if I want J, J must be in the middle. Which two lines are making it? D and E. So D will be on one side, E will be on the other side. So D, J, E is going to equal to 90 degrees. And the reason is angles in a semicircle. 
Now, if it's an angle in the semicircle and the one part, J1, is 59, then what will J2 be? J2 is going to simply be 90 degrees minus 59 degrees because we know together they're 90 degrees. So, angle J2 is going to equal to 31 degrees. Now, I have that this angle here is 31 degrees. Now let's go on further. Look at what we have here. Then what can I say about this tip of the butterfly and this one here? I can say they're equal. So T, T is equal to 31 degrees. And what's the reason? Angles in the same segment. You cannot go and put butterfly and bow tie. The examiners will not mark bow tie and they will not mark butterfly. They want the correct wording and the correct reasoning, which is angles in the same segment. So you don't go putting all those reasons. It will not be accepted. Now you have that S is 40 degrees. You have that T is 31 degrees and you've solved the entire rider. Let us take the following rider. Here's our tangent, here's our chord. And if you look, if I go from these two points, where are they meeting? At J. So I have that J is equal to 45 degrees, 10 chord. Now, what would K be? You have a perfect 90 degree. Why do I have 90 degrees here? Because O D B ODB is an equal to 90 degrees because it's tangent perpendicular to radius. How do I know it's a radius? Because O is the center of our circle and we've got that it's a 90 degree tangent perpendicular to radius. So if D1 is 45 degrees, then K is going to equal to 45 degrees. Now for I, you could do two things. You could say sum of angles of a triangle or you could simply say If ED is a radius, then I is going to be 90 degrees because it's angles in a semicircle. So if you want, you could say that or you could say I plus J plus K is equal to 180 degrees sum of angles of triangle. And if you solve, you'll still get that I is 90 degrees. Right. Let's try the next one. This one is an interesting one because number one, they're telling us that all these lines that are outside of the circle are tangents. Now as soon as I tell you it's a tangent, we got tangents from the same point. So what can you tell me about AD and AF? AD is an equal to AF. Why? Tangents from same point. Likewise, DB is equal to BE. And then we've got EC is equal to FC. Again, tangents from same point. Now, let's go on. What else do we have? If you have a tangent and you have a chord. So we have a tangent and we have a chord. What do we know? That angle will equal to an angle in the opposite segment. So there we can clearly see that X is equal to 50 degrees. And our reason is 10 chord theorem. If I have this as 50 degrees, and we have that this is an isosceles triangle, then I have that P is equal to 50 degrees. Why? It's an isosceles triangle. And you know it's an isosceles triangle because db is equal to be and you've already told them why now if you have that that's 70 degrees and f is 50 degrees what is d1 i'm going to have d1 is equal to 180 minus 70 minus 50 sum of angles of a triangle so angle d1 is going to equal to 60 degrees. 
Now, if angle D1 is equal to 60 degrees, what is Y? Can you see? You have to be able to start seeing the TN chord because it's such an important theorem. So, Y is going to equal to 60 degrees, TN chord theorem. But if Y is equal to 60 degrees, Q is going to equal to 60 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle. And why is it an isosceles triangle? Because EC is equal to FC. But we've told him that on top. Then last, what is S? S is going to equal to 70 degrees. Look at how it's working now. You have this angle. Here's your tangent. Then you have your line. And if you take the opposite direction that it's moving in, look at the opposite direction it's moving in. Look at where it's going. It's going towards that 70. So S is equal to 70 degrees. Again, tan chord. And if S is equal to 70, then this R here is also equal to 70 degrees. And that is because it's an isosceles triangle. Again, you've told them on top that AD is equal to AF. The tan chord theorem is their favorite, but you must be able to read it. You must be able to say, okay, here's my tangent, here's my chord, it's making an angle, and then I'm going opposite. And once you get this theorem, it's very easy to work with many riders after that. Thank you for watching.